me getting this opportunity to fight in the UFC, it's, it's my time. So, yeah, all I can say is don't judge a book by its cover. And, yeah, look for, looking forward to what, what uh, what's going to happen. Mike, uh, let's talk about, you know, your opponent that pulled out, man, Orion Cozy. He got COVID a few weeks back, you know. How does that affect your preparations when you have someone pull out so close to the fight? Um, not really. It doesn't affect me much. Um, I've uh, experienced this uh, so many times. Uh, once upon a time in China, like uh, my opponent gets changed hours before the fight. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just same thing, you know. Uh, no change, just yeah, same old. Yeah. Yeah, China. China is a is a is a wild place, man. I know you spend a lot of time there. Let's talk about that, man. Fighting in China, you actually was there before even your teammate Israel Adesanya, who made a big name for himself there. You actually made a big name for yourself. Yeah. That country is completely different from New Zealand, from <laughs> Korea, from. Thailand is it's a it's another it's world. A world I've been there. Yeah, yeah, I've been there out there many times, man. I know exactly. How was that culture shock yeah. for you though, man? How was that just stepping onto new land? Uh yeah, definitely. It was a massive change. Like you can't imagine. Uh, I'm first of all, I, I'm coming from Zimbabwe, moving to New Zealand. That's a bit of a culture shock as well. And then uh moving to China, I'm just like, oh, what is going on? You know, it's a it, just felt like I was out of this world, like I had left planet Earth because they they have their own thing. Like it just the way they do things is just different. So like I mean the first couple of months was just like what's going on, you know? Uh but uh you know, like my survival instinct instincts kicked in and I had to adjust and uh, yeah, adapt to the culture and uh started like trying to learn more about the culture and yeah and you know get comfortable uh in this new environment was there an an, an awakening for you during your time in china a little bit uh, i i feel like it, it, it was a moment of growing you know you get to in character building you get to know yourself you get to understand um what uh, what is it called your limits and all that and yeah you get to know yourself uh, you're in a place where not many people speak uh, English and uh, you, you only that like for me I, I spoke English in my native tongue and there was no one else who could speak with me uh, at the beginning uh, so you need to learn to adjust uh, and be like yeah okay I find ways to communicate with uh, people around you you know uh, so yeah, it was it was crazy because like my first maybe two or so months, I had no one I could talk to. So you know, I'm just slowly picking up words so I can just get by, and yeah, just learning new things. Uh, but the cool thing was, uh, like the one thing I always like one of big thing I always give to the Chinese culture is they're great hosts. So they looked after me as I was there. So yeah, I always appreciate that. Definitely. And, and you fought kickboxing a ridiculous amount of times, man. I remember, I think I saw you fight twice in one week. You know I mean? That's very rare for a kickboxer. What level of development did you have in your striking during that period? Uh, I mean, uh, it, it just grew. Uh, basically, I had to remember the main reason I was in China is to train and fight. Uh, so I'm like, okay, I'm, and then I decided to take advantage of that because in my head, I'm like, nothing lasts forever, right? So make the most of it while I've got this opportunity. So I just smash it out, you know, just get fight after fight, just, you know. And it was fun, you know, the, the passion part. I, I, I love to fight, so just getting that opportunity. I mean, yeah, I was like a kid in a candy shop, you know. So, yeah, it was pretty, pretty awesome. And now we fast forward, man. UFC 271 training camp. Has there been any lockdowns or restrictions affecting this training camp? No, uh, I've been fortunate enough. Uh, things have been going smooth. So basically, once we started our camp, uh, 
we're in a level where we can get back to the gym. Uh, it, well, it started off with, uh, with uh, what is it called, a limited number. So uh, if the, the timetable was slightly different. Uh, but uh, yeah, we worked with it and we managed to get through this camp. So I feel very fortunate uh, to be in a proper stable camp, getting ready for this fight. And yeah, um, and I've been feeling great, you know. Uh, before I was thinking like, oh man, if anything happens, you know, and then I have to train in in my garage, and this is my first UFC fight, and all that. It got to me, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm I'm just like, yeah, I just gotta do it. Uh, my teammates have done it. Dan has done it. Kai has done it. Uh, oh, a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of my teammates have done it. And yeah, and with such a camp, so yeah, I was encouraged to keep going and hope to, you know, I'm just waiting for the time to show off what about. Yeah, and you, you're spending a lot of time with uh, Carlos and Israel. You guys are all fighting on the same card. The three King of the Ring yeah. champions, you know, what's that vibe like? You know, <laughs> could you describe it? Oh man, three kings, like, like, uh, like everything about it is just we gotta. We just keep pushing each other, and we always remind each other. So it's just one of those things. We always have each other's back. We're always checking up on each other and just making sure everything's going good. And, yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's, since it's my first camp, uh, like UFC camp, I'm always, I've got those two to ask. And because we, we all, three of us have basically the same background. We all have fought in China and all that. We all both. We all, all three of us are kings, and, and uh, we are all fighting on the same show. So yeah, I mean, we are. We, this this uh, energy that we're sharing, and uh, yeah, it's just I can't really explain it. It's something exciting. Your new opponent, Jeremiah Wells, he has one fight in the UFC. Or he had a great performance, oh. you know, a knockout. You know, what are your thoughts exactly, on him? Yeah. Oh man, this this guy this guy's not coming to play, you know. Uh, he he also is building up his legacy, so um, that that's a good way to start, you know. Uh, I mean, you, once you're in the UFC, they're, they're not easy fights. You, you just uh, you take what's given to you, and yeah, uh, it it, exci- it actually excites me, you know. It excites me that that I'm fighting someone at that level, you know. So yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm actually looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I think his uh, his UFC debut was also a short notice fight, and yeah. that tells me that this guy is always ready. He is fight ready. So uh, we call it short notice, but the man has been on camp. He's just been ready the whole time. Uh, he's always ready. So I I am not taking it as a short notice. I'm like, yeah, we both are coming into this camp good and strong so yeah looking forward to it yeah a lot of people are looking at this matchup compared to the orion cozy matchup they like this one better stylistically your performance is it, it fits you know what i mean it fits like a you know like a fight of the night performance of the night type fight that, uh, that, that's all that's what i'm looking forward to you know the most uh i want us both to put on a show but i mm-hmm. That's just always been my thing. I like to entertain. I like to have fun in my fight. I, I like to give a show. And uh, I can like seeing what he does. Um, like yeah, it's gonna be one. It's gonna be a banger. It's gonna be exciting. Mm-hmm. Definitely. No, uh, I I advise people do not blink. <laughs> you know, it's been almost two years since your last MMA fight. You know, it was a. It's your only decision win in your pro career so far. What did you learn most about fighting Dimps? Oh, um, I learned that I can actually go three rounds, you know, uh, and yeah, it was a, my patience as well. And just being more relaxed, I felt real calm, uh, despite like, like, uh, you know, it, it's a bit of a pressure. Like this guy, Dimps has been in the game for a bit and I'm just like, I've only had two fights, so at that point uh, and I'm just jumping in and me feeling comfortable in the, in that fight gave me more, it gives me more confidence, you know, 
So yeah, it's it's actually yeah, it's like it's it's cool. It's like yeah, I can do it. Uh, I I really feel like I deserve to be where I'm at. All right. Um, you know, during fight week, a lot of focus will be on you. You know, fans will say, actually, fans will look at your record and they'll see three and zero, mm-hmm. and they'll think, oh, he doesn't have much experience. You know, how is he in the UFC? What is your answer to that? Don't judge the book by its cover. Mm-hmm. Really. Um, like uh, uh, the best example I can uh, give uh, is uh, Joseph Valzellini. Uh, he ended up being glory kickboxing champion. But uh, when he started, I think I'm very sure his record was close to mine, like three fights. And he just started lighting people up. And yeah, like five, fought well against top fighters. I remember one of my... One of my favorite fights to watch uh, in kickboxing is him versus Nicky Olskin. And Nicky has been there for, like, he's got a big record. He, he's a legend in the game. And it, watching them fight together, I'm just like, wow. This, I had the same reaction when I first saw him jump into glory the first time. Like, this guy with this, this amount of record, nah, you know, you know, doubted him. I, I'm guilty for doubting him. But that's when I learned that lesson. Like, do not judge a book by its cover. He had put in the work way before. He, yeah, so he got enough time to train, hone his skills, and then he showed it. And, you know, seeing that, I'm like, okay, I've I've done it. I've done this. I've been training MMA for a while. Okay, and me getting this opportunity to fight in the UFC, it's, it's my time. So, yeah. All I can say is don't judge a book by its cover. And just, yeah, look for, looking forward to what, what uh, what's going to happen. Yeah, I hope people watch this interview so they know. And, you know, the other interviews that you've done to get an idea of, like, how deep your martial arts background goes. You know what I mean? You've had 100 fights. You know what I mean? More than 100 fights. So that's, uh, that's yeah. all experience right there. What do you envision in your UFC debut against Jeremiah Wells? Uh, I'm not going to lie. I... I I'm not much of a visual person, uh, but ideally, I just want to have a show, man. I just, I just, I just want to continue that blood diamond legacy I've been having all this time, you know, uh, like giving people a show. You know, uh, I'm an entertainer, so I, that's what I want to do. I want to entertain, and yeah. I know he's bringing his A game. I'm definitely bringing my A plus game. So yeah, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna be exciting. All right, man. February twelfth, UFC two seventy one, Houston, Texas. Blood Diamond. Thank you so much, man, for the time. Good luck on the fight, man. No, no problem. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me around.